Memories of Morocco The Maghreb Part 3 English Edition A Million Merry Memories of Morocco Or even better A Million Merry Memories of My Morocco Part 3 English Edition The sounds of train running on track, sounds of taking off jets, local cafes, bazaars or souks, public squares and moving buses make me ecstatic. Sitting side by side with the commoners of the world, trying to get to know their common values have always excited me all throughout my life. I am a commoner myself and I make no bones about it. I suspect I might have been born in a moving train, if not in a railway station or gare. This is Hassan II Mosque. Today it is the largest functioning mosque in all of Africa. Altogether more than 100,000 worshippers can pray inside and outside put together. It is a fine blend of Arab, Islamic, Andalusian and Moorish architectural styles. The minaret is 60 story high. It was built back in 1993 at a cost of more than half a billion US dollars. Today it proudly stands on a promontory majestically overlooking the Atlantic Ocean. I am the narrator Mahendra Patil, courtesy Wikipedia. In Casablanca, we toured a historic Rick's Cafe, Hassan II Mosque, Winding Corniche along Atlantic Shore, the historic and charming Medina, etc. To be on safe side, we rested enough on the first and last day of our trip to Morocco, the Maghreb. While staying in Casablanca, we continuously and fondly talked about the top-ranked Hollywood movie Casablanca, which was released 80 years ago, back in 1942. The romantic and thrilling classic movie received eight nominations and won three Academy Awards for Best Picture, Best Adapted Screenplay, and Best Director. American actor Humphrey Bogart and Swedish actress Ingrid Bergman had played the memorable leading roles. 
That's precisely why we went to visit the world-renowned Rick's Cafe. In Fez, or Fez, however you prefer to call it, we toured the five-century-old tannery, a working porcelain tile factory, a finely built blue gate, a vast, mysterious and romantic medina. We had a wonderful bird's eye view of Fez or Fez from the top of the hill. We shop for Moroccan soccer jerseys. For next few days, I faithfully wore those colorful jerseys to impress the Moroccans. I tried my best, believe me, whether I succeeded to make a good impression on Moroccans or miserably failed, only the proud Morocco can stand up and tell me.
Medina of Fez is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. It was founded back in the 9th century. It rose to the zenith during the 13th, 14th century ACE when it became the capital of kingdom. Fez Medina is considered as one of the most extensive and best preserved historic towns of the Arab Muslim world. Fez is still the Moroccan cultural and spiritual capital. References, scholarly website of UNESCO, United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization based in Paris. I have traveled in the world's trains since the mid-1950s when I was barely six or seven. I am a train addict. The sounds and the movements of the trains drive me to the brink of mental bankruptcy. I have traveled in Polish, Portuguese, Swiss, German, Italian, French, English, Japanese, Indian, Ecuadorian, Spanish, Australian, Austrian, Danish, Norwegian, Swedish, Dutch, Singaporean, Hong Kong, Russian, Mexican, Peruvian, and Chinese trains. I am madly in love with my million merry memories of my world train travels. I like to carry very much those priceless memories when I go to the afterlife. Tangier The city of Tangier is building itself in a hurry into a modern mini metropolis. It feels as though it wants to stand up to the next door neighbor, the European continent. It acts, sounds and behaves like a solid, everlasting, swinging bridge between European and African continents. We walked here and there on our own. We also took a city tour. The country is officially called as the Kingdom of Morocco and the head is the king himself. French and Arabic are spoken mostly and one can get away with the English in cosmopolitan areas. People are mostly tolerant of each other and relative calm and peace prevails in the country. Moroccan culture is a perfect blend of Berber, Arabic, European and African. Some 40 million Moroccans call Morocco as their home sweet home. Everywhere we go, they tell us that they love Hollywood movies and quote Shah Rukh and Amir Khan's names. They ask us if we happen to know them. We reply, we wish. Many times they ask us if we are from Pakistan. When we, are, when we reply that we are from India, they just accept us for what we are. Sometimes they ask us if we are Muslims. We just tell them the truth. Moroccans are liberal people.
sitting on Iberian Peninsula, Rock of Gibraltar is a overseas British protectorate and a city. It is 7 meters in size and houses 34,000 people. In 11 hours, we visited Gibraltar and returned to Morocco. We crossed from African continent into European continent by Spanish ferry just to enter Spain. Then we marched on to Gibraltar by crossing two Spanish cities of Algeciras and La Lenia by bus and taxi. Rock of Gibraltar is now a heavily fortified British military post. This is the first for us to set foot in three countries of Spain, United Kingdom and Morocco and two continents of Africa and Europe in 13 hours. Wow, we said, we are impressed with ourselves. Inshallah, as they always say in Morocco and all of the Arabia, Inshallah means God willing. One day it rained heavily. We wasted no time to take a shelter under the materialistic pleasures of life in an adjacent modern shopping mall.
Swarna and I rode the fast and furious Al Barak train in Tangier and headed towards the capital city of Rabat. Rabat is a city of less than a million people. The train departed on the Swiss time precision. It is running at a furious speed of 288 km per hour at one time. Al Barak means the lightning. In Islamic tradition, it was a heavenly equine which served as the Mount of Prophet Muhammad on one of his journeys. Here and there, not everywhere, once in a while we got lost because we are not in any tour group and mostly wander around aimlessly and fearlessly in the streets, small romantic cafes and buses. The narrow Byzantine alleys without any signs or names take us nowhere, I mean nowhere. At times we were furious and frustrated. We love to get lost once in a while to free ourselves from the mundane chores and shackles of responsibilities. Moroccan architecture is an exotic concoction and a perfect blend of Roman, Byzantine, Almoravid, Moorish and avant-garde styles. It was thrilling and a heavenly experience for a student of history, culture, architecture, geometry and higher math mathematics like myself. The beauty of stained glass windows and French style furnitures make us feel as if we have just arrived in Magic Kingdom to file for mental bankruptcy. We fell madly in love with this kaleidoscopic color display of windows and styles of furnitures. Have you ever seen anyone falling in love for the first time for stained glass windows and furniture in your lifetime ever? Rabat Rabat is the undisputed political capital of modern Morocco. We stayed in Medina, the old fortified city very next to Kasabah of Udayas. The Kasabah of Udayas is simply out of this world. It looks surreal as if it is a perfect Hollywood or Bollywood movie set or scenes from grand French or Italian operas. Rabat speaks for its Islamic and French heritages. It was cold, dark and dingy and rained heavily now and then, here and there. But host Morocco and the capital city Rabat kept us fired up. We wandered in the narrow alleys 
rubbing shoulder to shoulder with friendly commoners of the capital city of Rabat even if we had to carry umbrellas
A seca do que busca a pandemia da hipocadinha não está fora que está já com a sua mão. Kautaubia Mosque is the largest mosque in Morocco. It is located in Medina, near famous public place called Jama El Fna. This famous mosque was built during the 12th century ACE. It is an excellent example of Al Mohad, Moroccan and Moorish styles of architecture. Reference source Wikipedia This is the fourth time since 2000 we are visiting the African continent. Sitting at the top of Arabic African continent, Morocco has a unique face and a character of its own. Its Maghreb are West. Mostly Arabic and French are spoken here. We are the world citizens and hence entire world is our stretch. We may not understand much of French and Arabic, two of the beautiful languages of the world. But we speak the universal language of love and friendship and are the best ambassadors of hope, peace and faith. We are also armed with a little bit of world's reserve currency, the dollar. We will use these two soft powers to win the heart of 40 million Moroccans and if possible to win the entire psyche and soul of all of Arabia. We love all religions, cultures, cuisine and languages equally including our own. World has many faces and that is precisely why we travel the globe over and over, time after time.
We love the streets, cafes, local trains and buses, souks and the streets where we can mingle with the commoners and their common values. That is where the real Morocco lives, we think. The real Morocco does not live in five-star hotels or in fast trains. Marrakesh The hustles and bustles of broad boulevards and bazaars of Marrakesh made us feel as though we were in magic kingdom of United States or Maya bazaars of India. We will depart Marrakesh only, figuratively speaking, when we run out of money either to our beloved native land of India on the east end of the world or to our equally beloved adopted home of more than half a century in Chicago, United States of America. We visited Kautobia Mas, the public square, Jama El Fna, the Bai Palace and the exotic souks. The experiences filled all our six senses all day long. The bazaars, the train stations, the mosques, the public places tickled our fancy and thrilled our imagination, day and night. The main broad boulevard of Marrakesh is lined with seductive palm and orange trees. The colorful horse buggies pass by taking the travelers for a romantic ride of the town. Old city center and bazaars are overflowing with cycles, pedestrians, motorcycles, horses, horse buggies, rickshaws and motor vehicles. The scenes are reminiscent of Arabian nights and days. The street crowds and the traffic, bazaars and the roundabouts evoke million merry memories of faraway India. People are unusually friendly and down to earth. We are having a ball of a lifetime. Entire Morocco is a showcase of world-class architecture. I think we get more bang for our buck here in Morocco than continental Europe. Trains mostly run full in second class. So on the second day we switched to the first class to travel like king and queen of kingdom of delusions. But this luxury class journey was lonesome. We felt very guilty because we were separated from the common people of Morocco and their common values. We are intoxicated with sudden changes of topography, scenery, landscapes, cultural values and moreover pace of life. We feel we are in a new planet with different opera sets, sounds, smells, music, cuisine, seasons and so on and so forth. These changes were unique and priceless to charge our discharged body and mind. 
we made sure to recharge fully our body and soul before we departed from morocco Life is a wonderful one-way journey. We just happen to be the guest travelers on this earth. We all came to this world hungry, cold and penniless. We all have to depart that way by the morning train whenever the time comes. And you know what? that time will come with or without a warning but my bottom line is to catch that train not crying but laughing all the way to the afterlife and i am mahendra patil the dusty rusty and bald but not old american eagle originally made in india 
and fine-tuned in Chicago, America. Thank you kindly.